So the other day I decided to make some really lightweight felt reversible or I guess double-sided eyeball earrings. It was super fun, super easy. In fact, I did it while flying on a plane. So it's a very small and compact craft. And I thought I would walk you through the process in case you're interested in making a pair of your own eyeball earrings. And duh, like why wouldn't you wanna? Let's start with the stitching supplies. You're going to need some embroidery floss. You'll need some felt in a variety of colors some scissors, and an embroidery needle. I prefer embroidery needles, or even better, I like chenille needles because they have a really large eye. It makes for threading a lot easier, especially if you are going to do this with friends who are interested in stitching, they're a little bit younger. First thing, you're going to need to cut out a bunch of circles. I like to use different kinds of lids, perhaps even like the lid of a bottle or like a milk cap lid, anything that's round to trace because I'm not great at just eyeballing and free drawing circles. So if you are the same, you might wanna do that. If you're going to trace it, you might wanna trace with something that's not going to leave a really dark mark, preferably not a Sharpie or a black pin because then no matter how much stitching you do to try to conceal it, you're still going to see those lines. If that doesn't bother you, then just trace away. After you have a, I cut out four of these eyeball circles because I. I decided, and this is totally not something you have to do, but I decided to make eyeballs on both sides of the earrings. What I've noticed about my earrings is that they tend to flip around when I wear them and you can see both sides. I didn't want anybody to see all of my sloppy stitching on the reverse side of the earring. I could have easily just put a solid piece of felt on the back, but since I had a little bit of time since I was traveling, I thought why not make four eyeballs? Next up, I cut out four different irises. That's the colorful part of the eye. Again, I use something to trace around to make a perfect circle. A lot of times I'll I'll fold my felt in half to cut, but it does mean that I have to go back and do a little bit of trimming because sometimes my circles end up looking a little bit like stop signs. That's just the way that it goes. I will say this, having a good pair of fabric or fiber scissors is a really great thing. I love these tiny little scissors because I'm able to cut out tiny little things, but I only use them on fabric and thread. Using them on paper would damage or ruin those scissors. All right, next up, let's start stitching. I'm going to cut a piece of embroidery floss. It's about 12 inches in length. Embroidery floss is made of six pieces of thread. You'll want to separate them. I like to use two when I'm doing embroidery and then I'm going to thread that needle oh so carefully and then pull a little bit of a tail. On the other end, I'm going to double knot that. To create a knot, I simply make a circle and put the tail of the thread inside the circle and pull. I do that once and I do it very slowly the second time because I'm trying to get one knot to land or sit on top of the other, making for a large knot. That way when I start in the back, so the knot is in the back, and pull my needle, the knot will stop it and not allow the thread to continuously pull through. Now what I'm doing first is I'm creating that kind of like spoke bicycle spoke effect that you see when you look really closely into the iris of an eye. So starting in the center of that smaller circle, I'm just making lines that radiate from the center. Some of my lines start all the way from the center and go to the edge of the circle. Some of my lines are a little bit shorter. I was trying to vary them a bit and not make it look too, uh, what's the word? I don't know, perfect because your eye doesn't look that way. So some of my lines are short and some of my lines are long. I also decided to change the colors up quite a bit. So not only did I stick with a color that matched the circle, but I went a couple of colors a little bit lighter, some a little bit darker. When my thread gets to be about as, I don't know, maybe three inches in length, maybe even a little bit shorter, that's when I know I'm about to run out of thread and I'm going to knot it on the back. All of my knots need to go on the back side. I don't want them to appear on the front. So let's talk about how to knot this thread. Teaching students to stitch, I call this the airplane trick. The airplane picks up a passenger at the airport, that's the closest stitch on the backside. As it takes off, it realizes it forgot a passenger, so it has to go back and pick up the loop, and then it can take off. Doing that twice, so one more time, pick up all the people at the airport, airplane is starting to take off, realizes it forgot somebody, go back and grab that loop, go through it and pull. Now you're ready to clip and your stitch is secured. And now we're back at it. So I've got another 12 inch piece of thread. 
After I cut it, I went ahead and separated it so I'm only using two strands of embroidery floss to make my stitches. I started in the back so the knot was there and then I'm making those radiating lines starting at that center point of the circle and just going outward. No rhyme or reason. Some of the stitches are long, some are short. Just trying to fill it in to kind of give it that beautiful radiating line effect that your iris has. You could use any color here. I mean, obviously we all have different color eyes, so change it up if you wanna. I just happen to have a lot of blue felt and a lot of blue embroidery floss. Next up comes the pupil. So now I'm cutting out a circle that's about half the size or smaller size of the iris. And now this time I'm not going to be making those radiating stitches. I'm going to be making something called a running stitch. A running stitch is like that traditional stitch. It looks like a dashed line. So once I have my needle threaded and knotted, I'm going to begin in the back so that the knot is always on the back. And I'm going to make a dotted or a running line stitch that goes around that circle. So I'm pulling up and then making a small stitch going back down, leaving a little gap, and then coming up and going back down. Now from here on out, this process is gonna go really quick because the circles are gonna get smaller and smaller. After the pupil, we're going to do a couple of teensy weensy white circles. Those are gonna be the highlights in the eye that'll only require a couple of stitches. So once you've got the iris done, really the longer part is over. This part is pretty simple. And then again, when you're finished, you're gonna flip it over and do the airplane trick to knot your stitches in place on the back. And now it's time to cut out the world's tiniest little circle. So this part can be a little bit tricky. And here's some advice, because this is something I learned. Don't make your circles too small, because as you put your stitches into the circle, the circle tends to draw in a little bit, so it will get a little bit smaller in size. So err on the side of making your circles just a smidge bigger. And then as you stitch, you might notice that they get a little bit smaller. So I'm cutting out two very teensy weensy circles. And then when I get ready to stitch, I'm going to do that same running stitch, but really I only end up putting about two, probably three stitches in each one of these highlights. And I do the same strand of thread for one as I do for the other. So meaning that when I'm done stitching this highlight, on the back side, I'm gonna sneak over and poke my needle up through the front of that other highlight and make a couple of stitches there before I make my final knot on the back. Now, once that's complete, you could technically leave the eyeballs just like this, or you could go on to the next phase, which is making the eye look bloodshot. And that part is really fun. That's the part where there's really no rhyme or reason to your stitches. You can make them look any way you want to, but the creepier, the more tree branchier, the better. So let's move on to that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. With my red thread that I've cut 12 inches and then split and pulled two strands of, I'm now making something called a back stitch. So a back stitch is different than a running stitch. A running stitch looks like a dotted line, but a back stitch will give you the look of a solid line. So you'll notice I'm making a little stitch and then on the other side or the underneath part of the fabric, I'm jumping ahead a little bit and then going back to my line. That's why it's called a back stitch. And when I do this, I'm just kind of making um, a diagonal line. So one time the line will go a little to the left and then it'll go back to the original line. Then it may go a little to the right before going back to the original line. And the reason being is because I'm wanting to make it look kind of like a tree branch. If you get stuck here and you're not sure how it should look, just try making a bunch of little letter Y's. So as you're stitching, think of it as the letter Y and then make another letter Y, bring it back to the original, and that'll create that kind of tree branch or bloodshot eye effect. Now, what I was doing when I was thinking about this is I was thinking about the corners of the eye and how when it gets bloodshot, you only will see those blood vessels on maybe the left and the right. So I didn't do it on the entirety of the eye, just a whole bunch on one side and then a whole bunch on the other. You might have also noticed I didn't put the iris or the colorful part of the eye right dead center in the middle of the circle because I kind of wanted the eye to look like it was looking in one direction or the other instead of just being right in the middle, making it kind of look like a target. Anyway, let's speed this up a little bit. This process, just like the iris, it does take a little bit of time. So like I said, it's totally optional. And if you definitely don't want to make earrings that 
you know, take as long as perhaps what I'm doing by making mine double-sided, then just do them single-sided or just do one. Who says you can't just wear one random eyeball earring, right? I mean, why not? So anyway, here I am stitching this guy. And now let's talk about how if you did make four eyes or if you want to make the back of the eye a solid color, how you can add another piece of felt. To do that, we're going to learn another stitch. I think that makes this one our uh, maybe fourth. We're going to do something called a blanket stitch. So for a blanket stitch, I'm going to put both of my eyes together with the wrong sides or the stitch sides together. And I'm just kind of tucking all of my little knots inside so that none of them poke out when I'm getting ready to stitch. And just like always, I'll cut 12 inches of my white thread. Here I am kind of trimming to make sure my circles match up. Don't get too hung up on this. Otherwise you're gonna end up just trimming away at your eyeballs. So don't stress about that part too much. And now when you start, you're gonna start in the center so the knot ends up in between the two pieces of felt. Then you stitch through both. Then your needle picks up that loop before pulling. So one more time, because this is the process. Go through both pieces, pull part of the way, pick up the loop and pull. And again, this is what you'll do to create a blanket stitch. What it will do is it'll create a line of stitches that will go over the top, you can kind of see it there, over the top of both pieces of fabric. That'll bring both pieces of fabric together and then create this seal, almost like what's called a salvaged edge on fabric. It'll create like a seal across the top. You'll wanna go all the way around the circle with these stitches and they're really pretty basic and simple to do. So let's see, now that you're finished with that, you're going to now have to get yourself what's called jump rings. Those are those two metal rings. I like to use two of them as well as a French hook for your earring. If you have jewelry tools, this might be helpful. If not, you can use your teeny tiny little fingers. You're going to pull apart the jump ring and then feed the fish hook through before closing. Did I call that a fish hook? French hook. Before closing that up. Go on now, close it up. And then once you've got that closed, you have to grab the other jump ring, open it up, and then feed it through that bottom jump ring. I know it's a lot, but the reason you want two is because you want to make sure the ring or the earring kind of rotates beautifully on your ear and doesn't just sit in an awkward position where people can't see your design. So that's why the more you add, and I like to add two, the more the earring will kind of move when you wear it. Now I'm going to stitch this um, jump ring and earring on, and I'm just going to create a couple of regular stitches. I'm just gonna go through both pieces of fabric a couple of times before catching that loop and then tying it off with a knot. It's that simple. So let's, let's recap, shall we? So we learned how to do a satin stitch. That's the stitch we use for the iris of the eye. Satin stitches are stitches used to fill in a space to add color. And then we did a running stitch. That was that dashed or dotted line stitch that we did for the uh, pupil and for the highlights. We did a back stitch for the blood vessels of the eye. And now finally we did a blanket stitch to go all the way around the edges. And here we're just doing a knotting stitch to anchor the earring in place. That's pretty cool. So for a teeny tiny little project, you just learn how to do a whole bunch of stitches. And if you like embroidering earrings, which I think you're gonna love it, especially when you wear them because they're super lightweight, I have tons of projects just like this, teeny tiny embroidered earrings right here on my YouTube channel that you can check out. All right, let's try these guys on and see how they look. Oh my goodness, could they be any more amazing? I cannot wait to wear these out, especially during Halloween and spooky season. I'm dying to make a dress covered in eyeballs like this. I don't know. I'm thinking about a way to do it, making all those little felt eyeballs. Though. That sounds like a lot. So I don't know. It's going to happen. Maybe just not like this. Anyway, I hope that you had fun following along with me, and I hope that you make yourself a pair of giant creepy eyeball earrings. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Toodles.